My name is Felix Dazie and welcome to another exciting episode of Inspiration with Felix Dazie right here on this channel. If you're watching us on TV, I want to say welcome. Well, um, uh, the last time I did an episode where I spoke to Miss Echia and um, we had an inspiring time from Impact Teen Nation and we will be continuing this conversation right here on Inspiration with Felix Dazi. We got to mentorship and then we were about to talk about um, what she does with Impact Teen Nation and I trust that this will be a blessing and an impactful time with you. Welcome again, woman of God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, great man. We, we had a long conversation the last time, exactly. so we, we're about to continue for some few minutes. Let's talk about, um, you were talking about mentorship. Now, mm -hmm. let's talk about Impacting Nation. What do you do with Impacting Nation? Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here again. Same, yeah. uh, with Impacting Nation, what we do is, is, is basically... Um, giving a platform we, mm -hmm. we call it a youth revolution but mm -hmm. giving a platform for young people to be nurtured mm -hmm. cultured and mentored mm -hmm. and we believe that one of the most uh, neglected components of leadership is, is is mentoring and so we as organization give room for as many people that that believe in our values you know we we have what we call the three v's values virtues and visions okay and so people that young people that have the desire the quest to change the status quo in society we look at leadership in our society now in ghana and we know that there, 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 there are some things to be changed okay we look at we, we look at mentoring we look at leadership defects and and societal paradigms and we know that we need a paradigm shift and so young people that would put themselves forward to be the means and the channel for these study schools to be changed. We give attention to them, nurture them, culture them, and then in so doing, we know that we are building the nation one person or one youth at a time. So right. basically this is what we do. All right. Well, what has been some of um, the things that you've recognized with a lot of people that have come into mentorship, um, to be mentored with Impact Nation? Interesting. I, I would say it goes both ways. Um, over time we realize that yes a lot of people come with passion I, I want to be mentored you know I want to be your mentee mm -hmm. and and for them what it means is perhaps getting an ATM mm -hmm. or getting <laughs> <laughs> an uh -huh. ATM in a mentor mm -hmm. or maybe getting a bank roller mm -hmm. you know when they want to go into student activism or leadership mm -hmm. they get a powerful name or mm -hmm. sometimes they look at where you work and they feel like that's a good contact mm -hmm. to say I know HR she works here you know and not really what the entire scope of mentorship entails you know mm -hmm. and but then when they come close we let them know i mean leadership is is first followership leadership is first service okay. leadership is 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 first looking out for needs mm -hmm. in places of needs to meet it you we always have this mantra or slogan that you go where the need is greatest and you help the smallest so what needs have you identified what can you help on your campus, on your environment, in your spheres of influence and contact? All right. So um, we've also made gains. We've seen young people come and initially didn't have an understanding of all these things, gave themselves to these, and now we've made great leaders out of them. And they in turn are passing the baton to others. Our slogan or our motto as an organization is passing the baton. And we believe that whatever has fed you, you also give back, you feed others mm -hmm. to, to, to become as you are. So okay. these are what we've identified. I, I, I would say that it's been challenging in that um, the desire we have to give back, we do not find as many young people who want to go through process. They just want, like I said, an ATM. They just want your contact. Your contact. They mm -hmm. just want to know or have a feeling that they know you and mm -hmm. not really what it means to follow or the process it means to go through what you went through to become who you are so this is a generation we have lots of young people who want quick fixes they just want to be able to stand on the platforms you are standing on be a conference speaker they want to have a name they want to be the next influencer be out there without knowing that you don't get out there just by being out there okay. you first of all have to go through the mail 
to be drilled before okay. you can be a thrill. <laughs> wow, say that again. Rewind and press play on that. You first of all, have to go through the mill to be drilled mm -hmm. before you become a thrill. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Let, let's talk about how you started Impact Nation mm. um, into details. How mm. did you get to start this? Yes, so uh, in our earlier conversation, I, I brought up the fact that, you know, I, I saw what Moremi Initiative had done. Yeah. I, so that was a replica or something mm -hmm. that I could replicate. Uh, Where you meet your mentors at home. At home. Okay. So it's more intensive. It's more interactional. It's also, um, um, it's, it's, it's personal. It's not that you go for conferences, see a mentor figure speak, perhaps have opportunity to ask questions or maybe not. And then they just go away. We went and we've gone to several conferences back in mm -hmm. the day. You know, a lot of road shows and all these virtual programs, you know, of conferencing. But this time, our style is different. It is that mentoring mm -hmm. that is people-oriented, mm -hmm. one person at a time. Mm -hmm. It is mentor-mentee relationship that is intensive. Okay. It's, 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 it's actually intentional, too. Okay. So I know that it's, it's Felix I'm, I'm on. And so I don't just speak to him and leave him to go. I follow up. Okay. How far with the goals mm -hmm. we set together? How are you achieving it? How are you doing it? Mm -hmm. And every aspect of your life, mm -hmm. you know, not just your professional school academics. I look at even presentation. I look at, I mean, hygiene. I look at every other thing, even mm -hmm. relationship and, and everything about the person. It's a 360 thing. Exactly, 360. So it's an all-around mentoring which is interactional, intensive, and, and, and also it's purposeful. Okay. You know that you're growing with the person. It's not just you speak to them, leave them, and then they have to figure out how to use the 10 keys of, of being a success, 20 keys of being a leader, 50 keys of becoming an influencer. No, you just don't release keys to them and not know what doors have they been using to open. They did open. Did they stay in that door long enough? What are the challenges that came in that room after they opened the door? Mm. Is the door closed behind them? Do they have other doors they can open with same key or perhaps other keys? So it's, 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 a, it's a program. It's a long haul. And you do not speak to them and leave them on the side, but you actually put them on a program, grow with them, give them mentors and people they can look up to at every step of the way. They can always come back mm -hmm. and say, mentor, I did this mistake mm -hmm. or... I got this right. Mm -hmm. What next? Mm -hmm. And and then again, it, it, it becomes more impactful that okay. way. So that is why impactination exists. Okay. Because I really didn't see anything of a sort in Ghana. Okay. Yeah. So uh, has it been a blessing? Some some of the testimonies, some mm -hmm. of the uh, things that Impacting Nation has done. Tell mm -hmm. me about it. Uh, amazingly so. I, I, I believe that... Uh, the goal of leadership and the goal of every leader is to have begin something, see it run, you know, with time, see results, and then again you can look back and then even with all the begging challenges say that it was worth it. And for me, I look back with that fulfillment constantly and we're still growing, but I can say that it's been fulfilling. Uh, I, I see most of the people that started with us, the things they are doing, mm -hmm. Um, things that they have set up, the number mm -hmm. of people they have also um, impacted and okay. the accomplishments they've made as young people. Mm -hmm. One thing we believe is that success and achievement is not in code for the aged. Okay. And that even the Holy Script says that the aged are not always wise. wise. Mm -hmm. So young people mm -hmm. uh, like Job, in a very young age, he said that when he got to the gates, the elders stood up for him. Mm -hmm. So it's possible to have young people in their day making influence and impacting lives in a way that even the aged stand in attention and, 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 and in amazement of what they can accomplish with their giftings, their skills, their abilities. We have a lot of people that started with us, you know, not really having enough capacity, but we see growth, we've seen impact, we've seen them. Uh, um, replicating their results in other people and then also that confidence that they can also achieve something and now we have starting from UPSA campus actually that was my first that was uh, your first okay. yeah yes that first campus <laughs> that was your first born uh -huh. my first born uh -huh. so UPSA is a school that is really on my heart okay and, uh, 
and um, you can see that my team I came with today, the two of them are from UPSA. UPSA, okay. Yes. So UPSA is a school that gave me that inroad in Accra, you know. But the real, the, 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 I mean, I know I'll get into trouble with this, but I mean, being um, someone that is from Kenya University, of course. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. So there's always that issue there. But I, 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 I am as much passionate about all the campuses in oh, Ghana. Yeah. My desire is that we'll reach every campus mm -hmm. in this nation. Mm -hmm. I mean, within now in the next two years, we, we're currently looking at UMAT and then UNE in Sunyani. Okay. And we look at bringing even private universities on board. We currently have a Shesi also. And so looking at all the impacts, seeing young people who didn't even have that belief that they could stand up for something, they could be leaders, going through our mentoring and then having a niche for themselves in various fields. It's, it's such a humbling and fulfilling path. And I'm always excited that I, I, I gave this a chance. All right, interesting. For your healthy and delicious choice of bread, then look no further. These bakery services as your number one and preferred choice for your sugar bread, wheat bread, butter bread, coconut bread. Then these bakery services as your number one and preferred choice. For further information on how to order bread from these bakery services, contact 0508 or 0508 These bakery bread, your healthy and delicious choice. You can locate this bakery at Medina Zongo Junction, Accra. Let's talk about some of the challenges um, that a lot of young people bring in Ghana now. Mm. There are a lot of challenges. What are some of the um, open challenges or uh, challenges that are recurrent mm. in terms of um, mentoring the youth in Ghana? Great. Uh, like I also said earlier that it was good I had to go through some of the rough patches and rough terrain or rough paths that I, I had to deal with because I realized that in my part of work, I mean, the greatest challenge is unemployment. Mm -hmm. And I mean, year in, year out, you have NSPs, National Service Personnel, you know, about finishing like we have now. They'll be finishing by end of uh, August or September. Mm -hmm. And the, the question is, after, after National Service, what, what next? next? Mm -hmm. And then we have most people, at least for National Service, you know that there are placements and it's done by, you know, Ghana National Service, you know. but secretariat but after national service when you're on your own what next so many you they've had a lot of i mean <laughs> horror stories about unemployment they've seen their cousins their their uncles and aunties struggle with jobs they see how they queue for you know to be enlisted in the army for days they are in the sun they come back home they are not called or they are disqualified on many trivial reasons they, they see it all around them and sometimes when we go to the campuses it is their fear of coming out of school that really makes me fulfilled that i had to answer to this and step up for it because i have been through this mail and i see their fears mm -hmm. i hear them i know mm -hmm. we didn't even know then mm -hmm. in my time i never knew this is how bad it was mm -hmm. you know and it keeps getting worse by the day and we know the times we find ourselves in so um the major challenge is the fear of what happens after school, especially after national service. Issues with employment, job, career. And some are also some also find themselves in career paths that they didn't really they want. They didn't to. really want. Mm -hmm. And so my desire would have been that if we have enough capacity, we will start from the high schools. Okay. Because that actually gives you an entrance. Because by the time you meet people in tertiary, they are already settled already, for a yeah. course. Mm -hmm. And our on a certain career path, I know that can change after school. I mean, people read history, they are now in the banks. Mm -hmm. People read, people in GIJ in the banks now, or insurance companies. So I, I know there can be diversification. And, and I really advocate for that, that people should look out for their passions and not really consider their backgrounds, but still know that they can do something if only they are ready for it with their interest and passion after school. But it still doesn't stop. Even for them whose 
paths and career paths are well carved out, there's still that fear. You know, I currently mentor a medical student that has gone through so much with, in medical school that they don't even have the desire to practice. And there's mm. someone who has gone through six years. Six years. Yes, mm. and actually had to change a course and start all over again in a different university to read medicine. But I've been so stressed with the nature of the course. He's thinking to himself, if school has been this stressful, what about practice? <laughs> <laughs> and he uh -huh. didn't sign up for this kind of stress. Mm -hmm. you know, so what do you do with such a young person? You know, and there are many of such I talk to on a daily basis who, who are uncertain. It's the uncertainties, it's the, it's the anxieties of what tomorrow holds, what adulting is. And, and sometimes they hear very horror stories of adulting, which some are, some are really true. We all know the realities. But again, who is that voice that is going to streamline things for them, give them understanding? Yes, these are the harsh realities. But again, this is how you can navigate your way out and still make impact interesting interesting yeah. we, we get to talk about um, all these uh, but you work in a male dominated um, environment Absolutely. how do you get to call when people find out you're a petroleum engineer um, <laughs> <laughs> how is their response yes um i, I do get compliments a lot i okay. mean you get people uh, like, uh, 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 these are pictures because we have these are pictures of um, uh, you in your work moments, yes, all right? Yes. Um, uh, and that's how you're supposed to dress. Exactly. Okay. Dressing like, looking like a goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> With gloves, helmets, uh -huh. you know. Yes, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I do get compliments a lot. I mean, we, you don't find many ladies, like ladies, you said, yeah. is male dominated and, and how the working environment is being with men uh, is there chivalry is there mm -hmm. is, is there some privilege you know i would say not really no, i would really? say okay. i mean in that field uh, mostly when we work offshore i mm -hmm. mean you when you're working with males of course being a lady you you do get some form of um I wouldn't say privilege, but some form of uh, consideration. Consideration, yes, okay. maybe for want of a better word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In some things, uh, some people might disagree, but <laughs> I, I think that uh -huh. we still do have mm -hmm. certain things that we you know we get away with mm -hmm. that exactly. males, males might don't. get to be sincere. Yes, so I, I get compliments a lot, but whatever has to be done. I mean, when we get there, we all do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we climb up plants, we, we, we deal with machines, we are on the seas okay. and we, we stay in choppers, fly over the sea with the waves. And I had one very interesting um, trip where, I mean, it was raining heavily, the clouds were thick and everywhere was hazy and the pilot really couldn't maneuver his way. And, wow. And it was... A, choice between having to retain but we had gone so far and i mean i was sitting on tenterhooks <laughs> <laughs> i was virtually hanging on my seat you know anything could happen the turbulence mm -hmm. you know the pool and you could sometimes see him trying to navigate coming down the clouds going back up and but everybody had to be still because you do not have to give in to fear and panic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. end up you know distracting um, those in the coach and it, it was it was it was thrilling because at, at the end of the day when we finally landed i mean everybody could heave a sigh of relief like yeah, we made it <laughs> you know so those are some of the challenges with my um, my vocation Your that vocation, i like okay. to call what i do with impactination my avocation okay I, actually that's my life's passion okay so you're combining passions together exactly okay yeah all right Let, let's talk about um uh, uh, women rising mm. you, you think a lot of women can actually get into petroleum engineering what you do yes yes i mean in a day and time uh, the, the statistics are there to show some people say yeah we kept singing send your girl child to school, send your girl, child child to school. school. i remember Mama. that song <laughs> Mama, i know that uh -huh. you know so they, they they are like oh with with all those you know themes and songs and campaigns it looks like the trend is actually changing now you go to the investors and 
ladies are dominating even in fields like engineering mm -hmm. sculpture and all in the arts those ones that were male dominated mm -hmm. you realize that a lot of ladies are putting themselves for choosing those career paths and that 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 for me it's a very exciting news that also does not mean that we are leaving the male child behind it means that that gender that was not really giving attention to certain fields suddenly know that it's possible we also have capacity and ability to do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I would say that, yes, um, a lot of young people and young ladies now outing for engineering and even in my field in petroleum. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's the numbers on the ground actually look promising and encouraging. Mm -hmm. More ladies now are coming up in the field. Okay. And, 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 and it's good news. All right. It's, it's, it's good news. Yeah. It's good news. What, what advice or message would you have for um, young ladies who are coming up um, or young people? Or let me start with the young ladies first mm. who are coming up. What's your message to them um, concerning rising and doing great things in life? Yes. Yeah, so I would say that um, we're all born with innate abilities and everyone has their niche. Everyone has that one peculiar thing that makes them stand out. So we know that your peculiar voice and your peculiar way of presentation, <laughs> coupled with your good looks, <laughs> thank you, thank you, makes you fit for the cameras mm -hmm. and doing what you love to do best. So is everyone. We all have mm -hmm. that ability to do that one thing that make us stand out. And even among them that stand out, we can become the standard. Okay. We can come to a place where we can so magnify, even if it is one skill, we can so magnify it and become a benchmark. I always tell people I'm, I'm not the most talented. I don't even see myself as talented. Mm -hmm. I don't really see any peculiar skill. But then for the things I do or those things that I see as skills that I've honed with time, mm -hmm. Some of people ask me, how, where were you? Who raised you? Mm -hmm. Being a lady, how come you're able to do this and all that? It's because for those things that I believe are the things that make me stand out, I give attention to it. I give so much attention. I give myself time. Again, I mentioned process earlier. Young people need to know it's process. The process. Going in for quick fixes will not help you. Mm -hmm. You could be how big but look so much like you're ready for the market mm. but then when the challenges and storms of life come and you are not going through the mill you'll be exposed and so someone said when the fundamentals are yeah, really right. <laughs> 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 so it is in life it's not only about the city you know mm -hmm. when your fundamentals are weak without the process and the mill the challenges of life when you are up there when you have the spotlight you'll be exposed so give attention to that skill that makes you stand out. You have the ability. Everyone was given at least one. Like in the parable of the talent, everyone was given at least one. There could be more. Be faithful and diligent with that one. Give it time, practice, go through the process, seek mentoring, be accountable to someone. There should be that one person that can say no to you, that can say you goofed, that can say you are wrong without you being emotional sensitive enough to feel you can be corrected okay. if you ever find that person keep them okay. hold them tight that person that can always is not a yes man that one that can say no this is not fit for you not good for your brand no do this you know that person that brings out the best in, in you. you and when you find them keep them close don't settle for friends who are not as much obsessed with your victories so they, they just go with the tide and say yes about everything you will lose out in life you might not get the best out of your skill or talent or ability so there, there, there are a lot of giftings in our days and our generation we have a lot of platforms with social media and new media mm -hmm. there are a lot you can create for yourself and do for yourself give attention to practice to learning to apprenticeship and to mentoring do you think education in Ghana has a future Ah, that's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, education in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, um, because I you mean, talk about employment a lot, exactly, unemployment. Exactly, yes. You've spoken about it yeah. a lot. And now we get to find that people go to schools and know, and still our curriculums are the same. Do you think it has a future? I, I believe that it has a future, but like every good thing, we need to have changes with the changing times and trends like every good thing that has a future it would still need polishing it would still need mm -hmm. changes to make it even much better mm -hmm. i believe that we need to have a relook 
and rethink on, on the nature of our curriculum. I am I'm a STEM advocate, but I'm someone that believes that projecting STEM without other arts, you know, keep us a bit in balance, you know, and a false balance will not be too good. I believe we need to also project liberal arts like Ashesi is doing with their program. I believe we need to project, uh, we need to let people know that education or being the best in school doesn't necessarily mean that settling and being a science student. Okay. You know, you don't always have to, what about the arts? You know, you can excel in business entrepreneurship and I like that schools like UPSA have included entrepreneurship business and all these other courses in the curriculum I believe that we need to look at the arts too I am from a science background but I believe so strongly mm -hmm. most times people look at me like an engineer that writes so well because mm -hmm. that is that skill that uh -huh. I wasn't taught. Right? taught. I mean, mm -hmm. Sometimes I even begin with, I, it started all as fun on Facebook, on you Facebook know, right? And, and people kept saying, you need to blog, you know. Uh -huh. I started a blog actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to relook at it. But uh -huh. again, I, I think that t for most people, they actually give me those accolades or applaud me because it is, so someone actually put on my post yesterday, he said, I was thinking about you this morning and I, I kept thinking to myself, how can a petroleum engineer be that skillful with writing? But why not? Because actually, an engineer is basically someone who is using maths to write. Okay. Who is actually using maths and physics to mm -hmm. write stories. It's all about creativity, innovation and invention to solve daily living problems. So why not writing? But then again, we know mostly we even tease doctors they don't they have poor handwriting they don't write well and all that it's because we we think that being in science you know kind of delineates or make you dissociate from the arts no they work hand in hand we can actually have scientists who are very good journalists mm -hmm. and i have a medical doctor friend who is also a sports journalist wow yes mm -hmm. so i believe it's about time we understand that being the best in school mm -hmm. doesn't mean it should always be science mm -hmm. you can go to the arts you can go to visual arts you can be a good artist you can be the best musician you can also be a journalist you can be a tv person there's a whole lot and there are a mm -hmm. lot of fields mm -hmm which all demand that we put our best and we, we actually have people topping schools not always opting for science. Okay. You know, else in the time to come and as we are looking at now, we will see that some fields are choked whilst we've, we've not really, if, even in my industry, you realize that many people in engineering, but then sometimes what these industry players or big firms are looking for is, well, they are looking for welders. Mm -hmm. They are looking for, I mean, more plumbers, plumbers mm -hmm. vocational skill kind of labor and yet everyone is thinking i have to go read engineering mm -hmm. but if only we looked at vocational training like the nvtis and all that we could have more people in employment there but then i mean for someone that has aggregate six or someone that has six a's the expectation if you, is, yes if you mm -hmm. tell him go to that polytechnic or technical university and read this because you have a skill that can make you good in welding they'll feel like why are you suggesting that to me because it's because of how we've looked at professions and it all stems from how we've structured our curricula and how we've made it to appear that some courses are more prestigious than others all right so what we'll do right now is um, we'll take in some of um, the mentorship programs that you have been um, to with impact nation and then we'll see um, what transpired when you are talking to students and also people who are being mentored by impact nation and you so let's take a look at this i went for an interview somewhere and from the village Aptitude test, we wrote exam and the interview. About 80% of the questions were on technical. Before I went, I was learning about everything I'd known from undergrad, from masters, museum, big, bakokama. Everything was in integrity. And also, um, we went for the interview. Four questions, strictly integrity. They give you samples of scenarios that happen in life. So you're going to give them what you want to get from integrity and all that. Yes, maybe I feel like, okay, yes. 
um, at least I'm somewhere, even you can get Charlie just say, I'm not for sure. And it's also how you package yourself. Then back then, I didn't know how to really speak doing interviews, no. Even talking in front of people was difficult for me. But you have to learn. Some things like the Mr. said, just said, uh, speaker. You have to learn the art of speaking. Interviews, the money speaking. Sell yourself. After you sell yourself on paper, you sell yourself in the interview room. Simple. All before like the uh, social media. Facebook page. So impersonation. Yes, impersonation. The name is impersonation. LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Twitter and Instagram. And Instagram. Please. I had a come to me, he's here, he's here. You'll be checking the whole way to do, to follow it over. And at least, <laughs> and yeah, also, the essence is to be able to um, update you on programs, um, especially when you are doing your own avenues. So, we do not want it to end here. Most of you go for conferences, and that's that. Afterwards, you just sometimes even take contacts and you are never reached again. Or the people you take contacts, you can't even reach them. But the essence, what makes ours different is we do not want it to end here. Actually, this is the beginning. We want to have that mentoring relationship. Please, it's not about giving money for recharge cards or paying your cell fees. But then again, if you build a relationship, and um, there are a number of us, all of us are professionals. And like we learned from our last speaker, we are all volunteers. We are not paid for this. Whatever we've done for this program, we did it out of our scarce time and resources. And we actually took care of everything that has to do with money. So myself, Richard, he's our head of projects and programs. That's Edward, he's our head of uh, communications. And then we have our head of finance is currently engaged outside. So we we we, we do mostly what we do, and then uh, a legal luminary is also with us as a um, she's an all-round protocol head. So we this is the team, and we've been doing this for about four years now. It's our fifth year, and. We actually, I would say that everyone working on this team was actually a social capital, or a product of social capital. These relationships were developed right from KN West. So all of us are from KN West. Wow. And we are doing this from KN West. So um, I know you are not happy about this. Yes. <laughs> it's actually a lesson. <laughs> so I would want you one day to also, after school, give back to society, go to KM West, and then tell them that they are legal and next and you see how they <laughs> Anyway, but so I'm an engineer with GMPC. Please, please come for it. Please come for it. I'm, I'm fine. Yes. <laughs> 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 so, okay. When we close, you can interact so that this is, uh, we are done. Yes. So we that do we, we, don't, I, I, we are quite behind time, but we'll do this again. So in ending, I want to say, once you are on our platforms, we can reach you. Once we know your handles, and with Derek, he's done a yeoman's job. Can we say it? Please, um, what we have is after we go to a company, that is the only campus we are not doing. We have been to UPS. It's in UPS, uh, uh, okay, so that's after from UPS as well. Okay, great. Then, is it more? No, no. Oh, oh, okay. So um, we've been doing this. Once we go there, we leave a chapter. We call them galaxies. So this, um, for some time, I will be working with Derek and Richard. Yes, celebrating to he actually. <laughs> who have really made this possible and so we want to have that foster that relationship so that we can come back again and next time when we are coming back it wouldn't only be Derek and Richmond doing the work but you can volunteer and like you were taught it, it adds up you know to your social quotient or your capacity socially and then again when we have to send a reference letter or recommendation for you in a whether in an internship or a job, we used to do that a lot for me. But if I don't know you, how do I recommend you? That's right. Do you get it? But on any day, I'll recommend Derry for any opportunity I find in his space or field because I've worked with him. And he's really gone through pressure. He started off with planning with SRC until we are here. So change of dates and all that. One thing I can say is that he is very, he's emotionally intelligent. 
that if I do not know you, how do I recommend you? And I'm not going to lie for you. Because <laughs> if someone engages you and you are not as emotional or your EQ is not at there, it comes back to me and I lose a relationship there. I get it. But if I don't also work with you, how do I see your progress? How do I make inputs? How do I correct you? So if you're on our platform, on the Impact uh, Galaxy platform later on, then we can interact, then we can follow up. And from there, you can even have access. We do communicate casually sometimes and also learn as well. So please, we talk to Derek. We have your contact and information here. But then we want to have that formidable galaxy in Legon so that we can track progress. So do well and we talk to him or reach for any of them and then um, we we'll take it from there. So thanks for having us, Legon. It's been amazing and awesome. And uh, certainly I think we should do this again. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, Richie. Yes. So um, Derek, please. Uh, our president. Please let's welcome him. Let's welcome him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, most of our videos and everything, normally when we do these programs, we put them on our social media platforms. We also have a website, so go check them out. You're going to find the videos there, so if anything, you miss something, you can just go back to refer. Don't worry, so it's always going to be there. And make sure you come to you anytime we have these programs, make sure you come around. You learn more things. Right, thank you. Yeah, so um, over the years, over the years, I've actually developed interest in helping people build their capacity. So, whatever opportunity that I talked about, I'm trying to help people build their capacity. So, I try to, you know, connect the people around me and the people who are not in the room. And I was very curious one month. He came from outside campus and he joined us right here. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, uh, well, I actually want to thank the panelists very much for, you know, um, the knowledge that you came to share and the experiences as well. Madam Dorothy and Mr. Aaron, and then of course the head of state. The head of state? Yeah, the head of state that was here, uh, Chair. Um, I really want to thank you all also for, you know, making, uh, taking the opportunity to come here. I mean, it's, it's, I feel impacted. Although I wasn't here throughout the session, I believe I have learned a lot and I'll be able to share with other people. And I'm very sure that you've been impacted as well. And yes. I want to thank you for, you know, um, spending much time with you. We promised to close around 1 to 1 30, but there's a little over two hours now. And I want to thank you for being here. And God bless you. Actually, um, after here, there's going to be, um, we are going to take some photographs when we leave um, the auditorium. Yeah. And yes, I do. Yeah, of course. That's very very important. important. And there's good to get things. After the tour, we'll go back to the And I don't know if you're thinking that I'm going to um, Okay, actually, actually, my vice president made a special request. On the matter of uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, and there is a program that is going to happen at the SRC Union Building. Or what is it? 24th July. What happened? Yeah, 24th July, 12 p.m. at the SRC Union Building. There's going to be a seminar on entrepreneurship. So all of you who are interested in entrepreneurship, we can go so we'll about it. It's all part of the capacity. Thank you very much once again for Very important. And in order for us to get connected and share opportunities and experiences, it's very prudent that we write our names down there, you know, just for that and community to be created. Thank you very much. All right, welcome back. So this is what you do. Exactly. Um, you impact people and all that, right? Mm -hmm. All right. What, what do you have to tell those who are watching us concerning impactination and all? Mm. Thanks, Felix. So impactination has come to stay, and we believe in, in, in having a youth revolution where young people can be achievers in their young age and pass that baton to the next generation. Okay. We believe young people can stand up for leadership positions, can make impact right from their campuses like we did. That is my team and I. I have mm -hmm. a great collection of stars <laughs> in my team. And, and these are all people who are working, they have their personal lives, but they still give back to you know, the various campuses the various, working with okay. me. And I, I really want to use this opportunity to say thank you to them, especially to my PA, Frederick Mensah, for okay. standing with the vision and also 
the rest of the team they do so well my my project team uh, communications team okay. edward bonnie and his team and then also Jeffrey Kukwam Ponsa. And I, I, I believe so strongly that when young people set themselves to do a task, are united in the vision and, and believe that they can do it and go all out, there, there's no limits to what they can achieve. So, um, impactination, like I, I said in, in our first episode, that you can find us, uh, website is www.org impactination.org to see what we do reaching out to young people we actually also desire to have volunteers and partners oh, right. okay who would, who would come in and partner with us it's demanding both fiscally getting volunteers and then financially but we do everything for free wow. and from our own internally generated funds wow. but we've also come up with a partnership system and where we also give back to those who partner with us you know through various avenues and and and, and also cushioning their businesses and projecting them through our various platforms and right. we network among ourselves we believe in synergies so we have we, amongst us people coming together to set up businesses and to also set up organizations we believe we can have organizations that will rule nations right. and so impactination is uh, not just an organization that takes but we believe in giving back, giving back. and okay. feeding what feeds us to live all right so the numbers for those who want to join impact yes if you want to join impactination again the number is zero two zero seven two six four six zero six zero two zero seven two six four six zero six all right and then you reach us and we will definitely get to you all right yeah thank you so much woman of god thank, thank you, you for having me thank you pleasure. well i believe this has been a blessing to you and you have been impacted by reason of this conversation and my name is felix dazi don't forget if you're watching us on television the numbers on your screen you can send a message to us on the whatsapp number showing on your screen whatever question you have for mesa hr you can send it to us and then we will get to answer in our next episode um whatever um feed that you have concerning this interview you can also do so um with us via this number also don't forget to go on our youtube channel that is uh, on inspiration with felix dazi and you can watch um, this video and also share with your family and friends and subscribe to our channel that's inspiration with felix dazi don't forget your mind is the most powerful tool god has given you make sure you don't waste it i'll see you on our next episode bye bye For your healthy and delicious choice of bread, then look no further. These bakery services as your number one and preferred choice for your sugar bread, wheat bread, butter bread, coconut bread. Then these bakery services as your number one and preferred choice. For further information on how to order bread from these bakery services contact 0508-728-963 or 0508-096641 these bakery bread your healthy and delicious choice you can locate this bakery at madina zongo junction accra